Good evening, folks. So uh, one of the things that makes this specific channel so awesome is the fact that I seem to have a bit of an effect when it comes to, you know, different kinds of cases. You know, the Conrad Truman, they've gotten a lot of really awesome um a lot of a lot of signatures, you know, people asking me about the case, they're wanting to research it. Uh, with regards to uh, Scott and Bryant Ellis, Scott's gotten a lot of moral support, a lot of good information, a lot of good referrals. And in that vein, I would like to discuss again this evening another case that I feel needs to be put out there. And that is the case of Antonio de Mules. Now, Antonio um, is from Minnesota, and unfortunately, Antonio is no longer with us. Now, uh, just to give you a really quick base rundown, Antonio was 15 years old. He was visiting his father, and he went skateboarding. Now, this was on September 10th of 2015, and he was... Skateboarding, it was around 8 o'clock in the, in the evening. Uh, the thing is, though, folks, is that that early in September, it's still pretty light out at about 8 o'clock, especially up north. Um, and his dad, about an hour later, hadn't seen him, hadn't heard from him, so he went looking for his son. And he looked everywhere, couldn't find him. Antonio tended to stay very close to the, to the neighborhood. And so he drove down the street to a McDonald's and he asked them, you know, have you seen my son? He looks like this. He's wearing this. And a few of the people were like, oh, God, uh, you need to go in that direction because, you know, there's a body laying in the road. Unfortunately, it was Antonio. And he was <laughs> he was hit by a car. Now, um, Antonio's father is not given any fucking information. He's not even told if it's possibly even his son. He's not allowed to see anything, nothing. They just told him, go to the hospital. They'll tell you everything there. So he goes to the hospital. Sure enough, he finds out it was his son. His son passes away. And through the course of all of this, uh, the police are not doing a whole fuck of a lot. You know, almost immediately, they start with, well, you know, he he was hit while he was crouching down. We think he was sitting on his skateboard and pushing himself along in the road. The kid's 15 years old. I have a 15-year-old son, and you know what? The only time he has ever sat down on his fucking skateboard and scooted himself on his butt was when he was like five. That doesn't make any fucking sense, folks. Then they're saying, oh, well, you know, he was wearing really dark clothing. No, he was not. He was wearing a pair of camel pants, white socks, sandals, and a blue zip-up jacket, kind of dark blue, but it had on the sleeves these white and yellow stripes. He very easily should have been able to be seen. Then the cops were like, oh, well, he was in the middle of the road. Folks, this is a residential fucking road. Pedestrians have right-of-way on residential roads. What the fuck? So then the police are telling the family, don't talk to the press. Do not talk to the media. They are evil. They will twist your words around, blah, 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 blah. That very evening, they give a press conference. And in this press conference... They stated that they were looking for this type of truck because a, a nearby business had a video surveillance. We're looking for this type of truck and yada yada. And, you know, it's very possible that the driver didn't even know that he hit anything, let alone a child. What the fuck? Now, see, folks, their, their justification for this is that Antonio was a little on the small side. Um, Antonio was... Give me a second. I've got a lot of notes here. Uh, 
do Antonio. Okay, you know, like Antonio was, I think, about 5'2", five, 5'3", five, I think up to 5'5", five, five, and about 120 pounds. So 5'5", five, five, 120 pounds. He's not that small. But what the police did by stating that in the media was give the fucking driver, the hit and run driver, an alibi. Because in the state of Minnesota, if you hit something, you have to stop within the next reasonable distance to check and see what you hit, to check for damage on your car and see what you hit. This driver did not stop at all. And on this specific road, there are a bunch of gas stations. There's a McDonald's. There was a business right next to where Antonio was hit with floodlights going, the gate open, the whole kit and caboodle. He could have pulled in there and checked. Anyways, so a few days later, the driver turns himself in. His name is Adam Mackey. Adam Mackey has several, several prior uh, convictions, not the least of which being, uh, do, 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 Grand Theft Auto, DUI, and excessive speed. Now, when the, the uh, investigators first took a look at the um, file footage, at the surveillance footage, they couldn't, they said that they couldn't tell how fast he was going. I call bullshit. That's kind of what you fucking do. But they estimated he was going at 70 miles per hour. The speed limit on that road is 55. Later, uh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Just keep in mind, 70 miles an hour. Okay? Okay. Now, He turns himself in and he says that he thought he hit a turkey or a dog. Bull shit. Not only that, but he said, oh, well, I, I went home because I didn't feel safe stopping on that road just yet. There were a ton of businesses, gas stations, a restaurant, the business right next to where you hit this kid and you didn't feel safe pulling over. I call bull shit. Then, come to find out, the DA is telling everybody, oh, well, he only lives a mile away from the accident site, so, you know, that was a reasonable amount of distance for him to go before he stopped to check the damage on his car. Uh, again, bullshit. Adam Mackey lives two miles away from the crash site, which is not considered reasonable distance according to the Minnesota law. So... This happened in September, not three days ago, three fucking days, four now. The family gets a phone, they didn't even get a phone call. They found out on the fucking evening news that no charges are being pressed. None, no fucking charges. You wanna know why? Because they say that Adam Mackey was not drunk at the time that he hit Antonio de Mules. Uh, he was leaving a fucking bar. They're sitting there saying, oh, well, he only had two beers. Oh, please. How many fucking drunk drivers do you know say that they only had two beers? Come on. Then they uh, said, well, he was having dinner at this bar. He was having dinner at this restaurant. It's not a restaurant, folks. It's a bar. And his girlfriend works at the bar. Tell me that she wasn't sliding him some extra fucking drinks. Come on, folks. Then they stated, well, you know, Adam was in, or not Adam, I'm sorry. Antonio was in the middle of the road. He was wearing dark clothing and he was crouching down, sitting on his skateboard and rolling. And he was a small child anyway. Uh, still, going at 55 miles an hour at 8 o'clock in late summer, I would have seen that fucking kid. I'm sorry. I would have seen it. I would have seen him and I would have stopped. If you know children play on that road, and I'm sorry, but if you live in the fucking area, then you know kids skateboard on that damn road. He has prior convictions for excessive speed. He has prior convictions for DUI. He has prior convictions for fucking grand theft auto. And you're telling me, oh no, it was a big mistake. And they keep trying to place all the blame only on Antonio. What kind of shit is that? What? Are you fucking kidding me? Folks, I have a 15-year-old son. I've got a 14-year-old son. Both of them skateboard. 
I got off the phone last night talking to one of my researchers who uh, hunted down a bunch of this stuff because guess what? Because no charges have been brought, it's all public record, folks, which means my ass can get a hold of it. No problem. I got off the phone with one of my researchers last night and I burst into tears because the coroner has stated that Antonio's heart exploded in his chest. Guess what happens, guys, to make your heart explode? Either he was hit head on, like he was standing up looking at the fucking car, he was hit head on at 70 miles an hour, or the car ran over him. His spinal cord was severed, so I'm willing to bet the second one. The car ran over him, severing his spinal cord and crushing his heart. From what I understand, uh, two, two people stopped to try and render aid to Antonio. One of them an off-duty paramedic, and he attempted to perform CPR on Antonio. Antonio was still breathing, meaning he was still alive, meaning he felt the pain from being hit by that fucking truck. The very thought that this 15 year old kid who loved fishing, he loved to cook, his dream was to be a chef. This 15 year old kid's last moments were agonizing, unimaginable pain, and the DA refuses to press charges on someone with a fucking record like that? That's not justice, folks. That's not justice. It's not. It's not at all. Now, I will be doing further videos on this story as it develops. I have spoken with a member of the family. I do have permission uh, from the family to talk about this case. And I will not stop talking about this case until charges are brought. So, uh, you know, I will go ahead and include the links to some of the news uh, stories involved in this case down below in the description. I will also include the link to the Facebook page and to the petition to, <clears throat> to compel the DA to file charges in this case down in the description below. Please, let's sign the petition. Let's get this done. This young man deserves justice. And let me tell you something, folks. If it doesn't happen now, Adam Mackey's just going to hurt someone else, probably your kid. Thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you soon.